morning guys good morning how are you all doing today i hope you're doing well um so welcome this is the little bean and me podcast i am kayleen and i'll be your host um thank you so much if you're a new viewer and you're just checking me out i've had a lot of new subscribers lately so welcome i hope you're able to catch this episode um if you're a returning viewer subscriber thanks for coming back i'm so happy you're enjoying so let's just jump into things today uh today's friday as usual it's filming day for me and cece's at preschool and tucker is upstairs and asleep thank goodness uh but it's been a pretty busy 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 week for me um last week my husband was home well he was home for a couple of extra days so he was home monday and tuesday this week which meant an extended weekend which was really nice but it was kind of through the rest of our week for a little bit of a loop so um i haven't done a ton of dyeing this week this is a podcast sorry this is a podcast about knitting crochet mostly yarn dyeing some spinning just kind of general craftiness and you know exploring things in fiber art so if that's something you're interested in then just keep watching so we'll just talk a little bit about the things i've been up to this week so uh as to in terms of dyeing i haven't done much dyeing this week um because my husband was home it, it didn't really lend to a lot of you know kind of quiet peaceful alone time we were very busy with the kids and um my son is still teething big surprise he's one um, and he's teething his uh, left side molars so it's been a little bit tough a little bit tough for us this week uh in terms of sleep rest having a normal child for a little while um he's been pretty cranky and not very pleasant to be around so it's been tough with that so anyway so if you guys don't know who i am i'm kayleen i am the yarn dyer and principal fiber artist behind little bean crochet on etsy and little bean loves hand painted yarn and i'll put the information here on the screen for you for your own reference um i am on all social media as little bean crochet as on instagram and then on facebook i'm little bean crochet shop and on etsy i'm little bean crochet.etsy.com on ravelry i'm km weaver just my name kayleen weaver um and what else what else is that oh we have a podcast group on ravelry so if you want to join that then you're more than welcome to i have all of the links down in the description box below as well as some timestamps and kind of a timeline of how things go on the podcast um today i'm also filming a little bit of a day in the life which will be uploaded as the second video um it'll probably go up after this i'd like to get um this up and out because this is a regular weekly thing and i just thought it would be kind of fun to do a little day in the life now that i have a new camera that actually has reasonable audio quality and video quality so i'm um, kind of showing you a little bit of how our fridays usually go um and when you see me here it's usually in the midst of all this chaos so despite being a, re a relatively calm environment um so yeah so welcome it's been a crazy week uh let me show you the dyeing that i've done this week it's only been a few skeins so the skeins i got some dye that i ordered in last week and i got some fluorescent colors um this is not as fluorescent as it can be here it is so this is the killing curse um it's a bit speckled which is nice it's brown and green speckles and this is the same color so this is on my everyday sock and this is on the yak sock and as always the yak sock makes dye just this delicious antique so this is the bright fluorescent there we go killing curse and then the other dye i got was this <laughs> vibrant so this doesn't have any other color mixed in this has the speckling colors kind of mixed in so it muted the um fluorescence of the green but this uh my husband actually named it come on Doo -doo -doo -doo. it is called pygmy puff and if that's not the most appropriate name i don't know what is so this is pygmy puff come on here we go it is a bright purplish pink just vibrant like in all ways it is the most vibrant thing like you can glow in the dark with this and then this is the exact same color dyed on the yak base 
So I think that this looks beautiful. Here we go. Okay. So here it is. Uh, again, it's the same exact dye, but just dyed on the gray yak sock base. And it just comes out into this beautiful muted mauve and pink tones, purple tones in there. So Pygmy Puff and the Killing Curse will both be in the shop this weekend. I'm supposed to get a new um, light box for my, oh my battery's going to die, that's awful. I'm supposed to get a new light box for my yarn. I got one last week that was broken. I put it together. It took me half an hour while the kids were screaming and um, the light didn't work. I got it all put together. I flipped the switch and the lights didn't turn on. They were plugged in. We unplugged them, switched the plugs, did the whole thing. I was so angry. <laughs> this light box was huge. It was a 32 by 32, which is not what I thought I purchased. I thought I had purchased the 16 by 16. You could fit Cecilia in this box. It was so huge. I'm like, well, you know, maybe I'll use it to display a shawl and that would be great. But no, it didn't work. So it's going back to Amazon now. But uh, I ordered a smaller one, which is 17 by 17. So that one should be here today. I've been stalking my front steps to see when my yarn was going to get here and also my light box to take photos. Um, so hopefully this will lend to some improved quality in my shop photos, um, at least in the sharpness of them. Uh, the the color quality is there, but it's not as detailed as I would like them to be. Uh, considering I have a new camera, I'd like them to look a lot nicer than they actually do right now. So I'm going to take a small pause right here, charge up this battery, and then... Okay, so I'm going to try and get as much filmed right now as I possibly can, uh, because I don't know how long it's going to take for my battery to fully charge. So we're just going to jump right into some works in progress and finished objects. So. I have one object that's pretty well finished. I am like in the 95th percent of being done with this shawl. This is the shawl design I was working on. It is very bright and vivid. This is being made with the Nyad colorway by Third Vault Yarns and then also the Spectrum colorway by Leslie Jean Knits, both in a worsted slash DK weight, 100% superwash merino. And this is at about 180 grams total weight of yarn. Um, I had some odd, I had used the yarn for other things, so I had some odd um, yardages, so it's not going to be equal 100 grams of each, but right now, let me get up so you can see, it's at about mid-back, it's a very flattering shawl shape, um, it's intended to be worn with some kind of shawl pin, or maybe some buttons, I was thinking to put buttons on it. But this is, was simply for design purposes to see how much yarn would yield a certain size of shawl. So that's what we have going on here. Um, I'm just not sure if to wear it higher up on the shoulder, if you're going to wear this as a typical shawl. Um, or wear it kind of like down, more formal I suppose. You could always go kerchief style and just kind of wrap the shawl around like a scarf, which is very cool because it's very warm. It bunches up right here. You can see the pretty colors, they're very pretty. So this is done in crochet. It is a linen stitch crochet, so a single crochet in a chain space. And I've increased in certain places on the shawl to achieve this type of shape, which is a, it's almost at my wingspan. Oh, actually, yeah, guess what? It's at my wingspan. This is unblocked. And the shape is sort of a half crescent. It almost reminds me of like bird's wings, like phoenix, phoenix wings, where the ends kind of curl up and in like this. So that is 95% done. I think I'm just going to go until I've used 200 grams total weight of yarn uh, on this to see how large it gets. And then I started gift knitting, gift crocheting, really. Uh, so if my mother-in-law, if you happen to be watching, please look away because this is your gift. Um, I did post it on social media, so I mean, it's not really a big surprise and you're kind of expecting it anyway. So this is the same shawl design. I am using the Manos del Uruguay, Uruguay, I don't know how to say it. Manos del Uruguay Silk Blend. So this is a cream ecru yarn. 
I had gone through almost a full 50 gram skein. I caked up my next skein so you can see the texture here. It's really beautiful. Very soft yarn. But this is more of a sport weight. So it's going to be many more stitches, but hopefully right around the same size. So this is a really great way for me to test my pattern. And you can see the general shape here. Okay, so we're back like a couple hours later, hour later. So Tucker is still napping. Uh, sorry about the interruption. Although it was like a second for you, but it was forever for me. Uh, so I just spent a lot of time just editing this little vlog that I was filming today. Um, I decided to do a little day in the life, which will be uploaded at some point. Again, I don't know, before this, after this, whatever. So what was I talking about? I was talking about finished objects works in progress. So I showed you this green shawl, which is pretty well done. The white shawl. That is the sport weight test of my pattern that I'm developing, crochet pattern. Uh, let us see other works in progress. This bag is a uh, you so-and-so bag. And in here are my two at a time little socks. So I have significant progress since the last time I saw you. This is in, <laughs> okay, these look like little Muppets to me. Like, how can you not think that these look like Muppets? Wah, 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 wah. But I have heels, guys. I have heels. Uh, for those who already saw this on Instagram, sorry we're seeing this again. But these are my little pair of just plain old stockinette socks, ankle socks. And I did my first fish lips kiss heel. Which turned out, stop focusing on my face, uh, which actually turned out very nicely. I found, well, so these socks, I... I'm using sport weight yarn, which I've never used because I've only attempted one other pair of socks and they were in fingering weight, so I did fewer stitches. Um, although I like the fit on my leg, I'm not super in love with the heel. It feels a little shallow to me, but I think it's because I don't have enough stitches. I really should have more stitches on here for, for a sock. So I might give these to my mom. My mom has really petite feet. So I think next time I see her, I'm just going to trace out her foot um, so I know the length and then I'll finish working on these. Text, text. Personal things, we'll put personal things toward the end. Um, but so when, so I wanna give these to my mom. Uh, knit these all up, I'll trace her foot. She has, I don't even know, a size six, ladies size six foot. So, and she's very petite. She's like 100 pounds soaking wet. So, um, these will fit her nicely, but these are getting there. They're almost halfway done. And I'm actually really liking the two at a time. I had a little snafu with my yarn. What ended up happening was, I have two cakes in here. I did not have a repeat of what happened before. Okay, so I have two cakes in here. They're individually wound. They have two... Well, they're not individually wound. They're a single strand of yarn, but from each end, so they're connected. Um, and then I have one strand coming out of each of the, um, 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 let's say um one more time. One strand coming out of each cake, so they are connected. And what happened was sometime between one point when I was working on them and then the next time I picked them up, which was earlier this week, the balls got tangled so the the yarn that was in between somehow like they rolled around each other and the yarn got tangled so I had to detangle it and rewind each ball because I started on one heel and it didn't help also that I didn't do very good yarn management and when I went in between the two socks so the way you knit two at a time is you're knitting you know you're knitting one side and then you're on your second sock, and then you continue your second sock, and then you have your first sock again. So when I was in the in-between, between my first sock and my second sock, my yarn got caught up inside my needles. So I was also pulling yarn through my needles, like through the far end of the needles, instead of just having the yarn draped over the back of the work free-flowing. So I had a couple hitch-ups with the first heel, which was this heel, 
but then the second heel went really fast. Now, I found this pattern to be really easy. I was very worried last time, I talked about it on the podcast last time, that the pattern, you know, is like 16 pages long and it's all of the science of heels of socks and what machine knit socks are made with and blah blah blah. So I was really nervous about the actual pattern itself because I'd never done the special stitches that she has you do, which is a twin stitch. So in essence, Socks Therapist, she has a YouTube video about that, so I'll link it um, up here and I'll put a link in the description box as well. But what you're doing is creating short rows, so you're not knitting to the end of the row, you're knitting to a certain place, and then you're doing a twin stitch, so you're creating two stitches in the same loop. And so you do a twin stitch knit, knit back, twin stitch pro, knit all the way to the twin stitch again. So like you're going back and forth between these twinned stitches, and then you turn the heel, and then you're doing short rows to increase. So like the first round is to decrease, uh, and then you do your your row or two rows or something, and then you are increasing again. So I don't want to give too much away on the pattern. It's a very simple pattern. It's only a dollar on Ravelry, so you should definitely go buy it. If you don't have it, it's definitely a nice staple to have in your sock making collection. Um, I'm very happy that I purchased it. So hey, what's up? Thanks so much for creating that awesome heel. I definitely prefer it to a heel flap and gusset. I don't like a heel flap and gusset. I didn't like that part of the Rose City Rollers. So yeah, that was my least favorite part. Okay, so those are my works in progress. And then this work that you probably have been staring at this entire time is the flax sweater that I started for CC. I'm sorry about the clanking needles. Sorry, sorry guys, sorry. Okay, so here's the flax sweater. It is my Old Town colorway. So it's getting uh, a little bit blown because the lighting is kind of bright in here just because of the way the day is today. These are these darker spots are very purple. They're plum. Um, but they this is about halfway finished. As you can see, I have the sleeves here. This is a free pattern on Ravelry, by the way. If you've never seen this pattern, this is a very simple knit pattern. It's by the same people who do the barley hat, which I've shown on the podcast before. Um, they have a series of simple knits that are named after grains or seeds. You know, so you have barley and rye and flax. So this is flax, and it's a very simple stockinette sweater. It's worked from the top down, so you do the yoke first, and then you separate off the sleeves, and then you do the stockinette body, do the bottom ribbing, and then you do each of the um, the arms. And it has the same garter panel stitch detail as you had on the barley hat. And if you've ever done their mitts, the maize mitts, or Actually, the maize mitts don't have garter. Um, if you do the rye socks, I believe the rye socks have a panel of garter. But they're all free patterns on Ravelry. They're very, very beginner friendly. So if you're a crocheter and you're wanting to learn to knit and you want to knit a sweater, I highly, highly, highly recommend this sweater. Um, it is very simple. They tell you exactly where to place your markers. They kind of explain the, the structure of the sweater and where, like what your markers mean. So as you're working, the top part of the sweater is where you work first. And you can see over here and over here and then two more on the bottom, the yoke of the sweater where you're doing all of the increases. So you have this nice running panel here. This, your marker was in between these two raised stitches. So between here and here is where your increase was. So you had an increase on one side and an increase on the other side. And you increase every round or every other round for a while and then you know you stop increasing, you just finish out the the yoke and then you separate the sleeves out and then continue stocking it. So I am feeling very good about where I'm at with this sweater. It's Coming across very strangely on camera. The yarn is very variegated, but the light spots that are showing up as almost white on the camera are actually a very, very, very pale green. So it's a little deceiving taking a picture of this because in real life it's a lot more it's a lot more uniform in terms of like green. Like this is a very, very, very pale green, even though this looks like it's white on the camera. So just for a reference, I'm almost through with my first ball. The two to four year old size says it takes 
two worsted weight balls so around 240 yards. I mean, 400 and 240, 240, 480, 480 yards. Um, so I am almost halfway finished yardage wise. So I'm around halfway done. On the sweater structure, I think I have like three inches done under the arms, and you have to do around seven for the two to four year old size. So I'm right around the halfway mark, and I'm feeling really good about it. What else do I have? Okay, so I have some acquisitions this week. I made a purchase, a trade, and then I had another trade. So I will start with my purchase. So this week's shop update, or last week's shop update, I made a little snarky comment on Instagram. I'm like, maybe I'm not going to have it at one. I'll have it earlier because I need to get this sock kit. And I'm very glad I did. So I got this sock kit from Machina over at Casual Fashion Queen. If you've never checked out her yarn, she's an absolutely wonderful independent dyer. She is so, so talented. Her colors come out extremely saturated. Um, this is the Mermaid's Dream sock kit. This is coming up pretty true to life. It is very bold, like a purplish red with black speckles. Um, it matches extremely well with the bag. I mean, this is just spot on. If you're going for a theme and you're you're um, you're trying to color match, she does an excellent job. And then this is the mini skein that goes along with it. So this is a sock set. So in essence, you have your 100 gram skein of yarn, and then your tiny little, I think it's 25 grams. She does 20 to 25 grams. Uh, she says it's around 92 yards, which is plenty to do heels, toes, and cuffs to do um, a sock set that coordinates with the bag to put it in. This bag, she put a little, I don't know if you can see it, stop focusing on my face. It's a little turtle. Oh, turn around, buddy. Here he is. Little, oh, little turtle. Um, so it's a little progress keeper. You can also use it as a stitch marker. And then this bag is nice and, it's not overly stiff. She uses interfacing in the bag so that it will stand up. Um, and then this is big enough here to fit your single cake of yarn while you're working on your sock, like your, your two cakes, your mini cake, which is gonna be tiny, and then your regular cake um, in here, and your needles. Ooh, oh, it's dark. Into the abyss, into the abyss. Uh, so it's a black line, lining of the bag, but the bottom is boxy and it stands on its own, which I really appreciate. So this is Casual Fashion Queen. You should check her out. Her website is casualfashionqueen.com. Um, she's not on Etsy, so definitely go check out her yarn. It is beautiful, she is talented, it is soft, squishy, like it is everything, it's everything. I was so happy to get one of these because she only dyed up like six of them, so, or seven, six or seven, and I think she kept one for herself, which of course you should so very very happy so those will become socks for me selfish yes i know but i don't care and then i did a couple of trades so this trade came it actually smells a bit like peppermint um so miss lynn over at sunshine and bubblegum she is doing a gradient cow where you just knit something in a gradient and so she sent me this lovely package of a couple of her project bags. So she is a, a stitcher, so to speak. She crochets and knits and does all the crafty things kind of like me. And she also sews. So these are the project bags that she gave for me. She gave me two. She said I could keep one and give one away. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. Um, <clears throat> these are just made with cotton. They are very flexible, so if you have a small project, it's easily um, scrunched up, but it's definitely large enough for a skein, maybe two, um, and your, and your uh, project. So she has her little tag, little hand done tag. Come on. Come on, focus, focus, focus. There we go, sunshine and bubblegum. Handmade by Lynn. Her handwriting is awesome, by the way. And then she gave these little stitch marker progress keeper type thing. It is, come on, focus please. Here it is. It's a sunshine, 
Of course it is. It's so stinking adorable. So thank you very much, Lynn. I will keep one of these and I think this little sweater is going to live in one of these for a little while since all of my other bags are spoken for. And then one of them I will do a giveaway. <clears throat> so I have a fall themed bag, some stitch markers from Melissa uh, for Nitty by Nature, their Halloween. And I also did a swap with Gabby of the uh, Once Upon a Corgi podcast. She has her Etsy shop and she's also a yarn dyer. Um, I purchased two of her skeins the other week during a shop update, the, the deep blue and the deep um, reddish burgundy. It's a very similar color to this one, except there's no speckles, um, but it's this deep, deep purplish red. And so I was chatting with her on Etsy and I said, you know, if you want to do a trade, let me know because it's a nice way to kind of try out other dyers work without having, you know, you're training goods for goods. So, um, without having to spend the extra money to do so. And she said, oh yeah, I'd love to. So I sent her the Cave of Wonders that I dyed last week. I had one that went over to her and one that went into the shop update on my yak sock. So I sent one to her because she was like, that is mine. <laughs> You're sending that to me. I said, okay. And then so she asked me what I wanted. And of course it was this one, which is Demon Unicorn. This is so beautiful. This is one of the most beautiful skeins of yarn I've ever touched. <laughs> it is a Diablo reference for those who are unaware. Uh, I like to game and I thought that was kind of cool. But she did this in a little puppy hair. Uh, Diablo reference. <clears throat> so uh, it's grays, purples, this red focus please. It is bright reddish orange. So we have red orange, this deep purpley gray with more purple, orange, yellow. It is just this symphony of color. <laughs> I guess is the word I'm looking for. But it is wonderful. I was very happy to do a swap with her. So thank you so much, Gabby. She's on Etsy. She's upon a corgi.etsy.com. And I guess she's also, she has a domain um, for her blog that's coming soon, which would be, I don't know if it's upon a corgi.com or once upon a corgi.com. She has a WordPress, WordPress blog right now, but she does have her Etsy shop. So go check her out. It's upon a corgi.etsy.com. Is it on here? No, it's it's buried under the label. I don't know if you can see that. Her website is like underneath the sticker <laughs> for the um, the yarn color. So thank you so much, Gabby. I really, really love it. All right. I don't think there are any other works in progress here. So uh, in terms of shop update this week, I'm going to do a shop update tomorrow. Uh, probably around... I want to say noon time as long as I can get some pictures taken and everything taken care of it's not going to be very large unless I have a ton of yarn dyed later today next week shop update will be relatively large I have yarn coming in this week actually it should be here today for singles so um, anybody who's been waiting for the single space to come back fingering weight singles 100% uh, superwash merino it's coming back it's coming back so as soon as I have a shipment in my hands that I check make sure everything's good I'm going to reactivate all of that on my die to order stuff so if you've been waiting to get something just because you wanted the single space then definitely check out the shop uh, later today or tomorrow because those will be reactivated you'll be able to select it from the drop down menu um, I don't know if I I don't think I'll have any ready to ship um, singles ready to go for tomorrow's shop update but we'll see how <laughs> motivated I feel tonight to die because it's already getting late it's almost two o'clock now I still have to upload edit and upload this and finish upload editing and upload the day in the life vlog so that is what I am planning to do so I'll have those four skeins possibly more tomorrow but at the very least it will be the four uh, in terms of other personal stuff, uh, Cece has a, um, bleh, Cece has a fall festival, a Fete de Foy. Uh, she goes to a Montessori preschool, so 
they learn French and English so she comes home singing songs in English and then she makes up words for the French because she doesn't know any French but tomorrow they're having their um, Fete Foy which is you know fall celebration a leaf like celebrating all of the leaves um, and they rake and do all of that lovely stuff make pumpkins have snacks you know anything a preschool can do and then they also sing songs so they set up these little risers and all the nursery school students kindergartners and first graders who go to this school all stand on the risers and sing and i've caught glimpses when i pick her up thursdays from chorus of them just singing by the piano and it is the cutest thing ever so i'm very excited this will be our first kind of recital i, I suppose for cc so that'll be great i'm looking forward to that uh, tonight I'm having a couple of friends over, which will be wonderful, a couple of my mom friends. Um, one is a military wife, and she's having a really hard time. I don't know if anybody out there can relate to something like this. I, I'm not going to give too many details because it's her personal life and her personal story. But she has a husband who is in the Navy, and they're due to deploy again. He's been on, you know, active duty, kind of like shore shore leave i don't know what they call it nowadays but he's been recruiting and um they're due back to go you know back out to sea so they're waiting for their deployment orders and they've applied uh, for residents out on the west coast where her family is from and her son has complex food allergies like life-threatening absolutely serious like makes your heart stop type food allergies to many 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 things including wheat, boat, oats, barley, pretty much anything <laughs> that you could think of as a common allergy he has. So he's a very complicated case and she and I share a bond with that. Uh, Tucker also has some really severe allergies and he has eczema due to his allergies and things like that. So we, you know, we chat a lot about food allergies and we really advocate in our area for, you know, parents who have kids with food allergies and things like that. That being said, He's a special case and he needs to be by family and by a hospital uh, because in case something happens, chances are an EpiPen is not going to be effective. As a first, I mean, it'll be effective, but it's, it's very, very severe. So like they need to be very, very close to um, medical care. They applied to be close to family and she just got news today that her, her husband was not necessarily approved for the area where they wanted to stay very difficult uh, thing to go through so I don't know if any of you out there are military families or you know know of things in that realm but is there anything to do is there anything that can be done to further appeal aside from the severity of her son's food allergies being close to family I mean they don't have many choices of where they can be and she needs that kind of support so i told her i said we're all going to move out there with you because you need your you need your tribe you need your your people to be around and if you can't have family around you need to have close friends so i'm really really hoping that things work out for them uh so it's been a little tough kind of a day so i'm really happy she's coming over tonight and we can just kind of hug and cry and be like sad about that news and kind of hope so i don't know if you guys pray or if you have positive juju vibes to go out into the universe if you can say them for her i would really appreciate it um because it's it, she's in a really tough position um with the way her husband's duty works he goes he's out for four months three or four months with the, no contact so um it's really it would be a really tough situation for her without any support so any prayers, positive thoughts, good vibes, that would be lovely. Um, anything else? Nothing else, I suppose. Nothing else, really. I'm, I love the fall, and I wish the season could last forever. Right now, we're in this weird middle place in New England where it's kind of wet and rainy and it's getting colder. We didn't really have a good fall. We went from being sweltering hot, and including earlier this week it was sweltering hot, to being... Ooh, excuse me, to being freezing cold. And I'm just kind of like, ah, oh, where's my like middle ground? I need that two months of just fall weather where it's dry and crisp and the leaves are turning. Because right now it was so dry and hot 
and then now it's wet and cold and like all the leaves they haven't really turned but they're already starting to fall off the trees because they're dying because it was so dry so it's almost like we got gypped out of you know this beautiful foliage this year which i was very upset about anyway all right so i think i'll just wrap it up here it's getting on to two o'clock and i have lots of things to do so if you enjoyed this video um and you want to see more you can always hit subscribe it's down below i always i forgot last week again again kayleen do post this on ravelry i always post on ravelry and i post it here on youtube there's always show notes down below with timestamps, links to anything that i'm talking about i also try and put stuff on screen for you so if you like it and you want to see more hit subscribe it's below this video somewhere um and if you liked the video you can always give it a thumbs up um it helps other people to see this content. If, if it's something you like, then it might be something that somebody else likes as well. So, that's everything. I hope you have a lovely weekend. I'll see you guys for a shop update tomorrow. Um, if you'd like to, you can follow me up on social media. On Instagram is where I'm most active. So if you want to see the latest of what I'm working on, what's going on with my family, you know, come hang out <laughs> on Instagram and uh, you'll find out. All right, I'll see you guys later. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll talk soon.